Hey everybody, and thanks for tuning in to Tying Tuesdays. Today we have uh, an awesome fly for you. This is a classic pattern. We're doing the Muddler Minnow. So it's tied today. We're gonna use a 5263 Tiemco hook. This is a nice 3X long, uh, 2X heavy. Good for streamers and larger nymphs. Then we're gonna use uh, some modeled turkey quills. This is gonna be the tail as well as the wing, or kind of the illusion of the body of our fly. Underneath that, we're going to use some flashaboo in gold for our main body wrap, the underbody, and we'll rib that out with some gold medium uh, UTC wire just to keep it uh, all in place, make it a little more durable. Then uh, for underneath the turkey quill or the turkey feathers, I'm going to use just a little bit of bucktail. I'm using the white, but I'm going to pull from the brown section of it for this pattern. And then we'll finish it off on the front with some mule hair. Uh, mule deer hair uh, spun on the front to make the head. The thread we're using is 6 aught in the light Cahill. So we're just going to start, I got my hook set in my vise here. I'm just going to start a little ways back from the eye, maybe a quarter ways or so. That's going to be kind of my marker for where I'm going to start my uh, deer hair head. So we're just going to work our thread back, making a little thread base here to where we can tie in that first piece of turkey feather. And just keeping a fairly clean underbody for when we come to wrap our flash boot tinsel over top of it. So right back to where that barb was, and then we can tie in our turkey feathers. So I have two pieces of turkey. Uh, I just went ahead and matched them up, clipped them off the quill, and uh, kept them about the same size. This clump is going to be a little bit smaller than what we used to tie in the, uh, the wing portion. So I'm going to measure out maybe about a third of the hook shank there and transfer that into my other hand to where I can wrap it in right on top. And so as you do this, you want to make sure, for one, to keep it on top here, but then also just make sure you got good pressure in your fingers before you release anything. And that's going to help keep those turkey, the turkey feathers kind of flared out the way that you want them to there. So once we have them set, we can work our way forward. And I'm just going to use the rest of the turkey feather to help create the bulk underneath on the hook shank here that I need. So we work that right up to where we had started our thread. And we can clip out ahead of time, measure that a little bit. Just like so. And secure that all down. From there, I'm going to go ahead and add my wire. This is that medium gold wire. This is just the ribbing to help protect the tinsel that we're going to add here in a moment. So we can secure that onto the hook shank. I tend to play with my turkey feathers a little more than I should. There we are. Get that set, and then we can add our flash boot here. So nothing too crazy yet, as far as this pattern goes. It's a great tie, super effective fly. There's a reason it's been around forever and ever. I'm gonna take just a little hank of flashaboo. This is probably about six pieces of flashaboo, the standard size flashaboo. And we'll tie that right in on the side here. And then work back on up to where our head is going to start there. So we'll half hitch out and then we can start wrapping our body materials there. Just like so. All right, so we're going to keep that wire out of the way for now here and go ahead and put our thread on our bobbin cradle. Bring that up to the right height. And then we can start wall wrapping this flash bill. When you wrap the flash bill, you want to make sure to try and keep all of the individual fibers together as best you can. They always kind of want to work apart. And if you just kind of keep pushing that front piece back, it tends to help keep them clumped up nicely there. So we'll work on uh, wrapping our body here. Just right on up to that same stopping point. Cut 
covering up all of that light Cahill thread. And then we can capture that down. Just like so, a few wraps, clip it out. And then we can bring our UTC wire up and just make sure that that's not gonna come apart on us after just a couple of fish here. Also adds just a little bit of weight, helps potentially get that fly down into the water column where you need it to be there. So eight to 10 wraps. Not sure how many I did there, but that'll work. Until we bring that on up and capture it out once again. And spin off our UTC wire here. There we are. And so now we can add a little bit of bucktail. So I'm gonna just stack these tips real quickly here. So just a small hank of bucktail there and I'm gonna measure right about to where that tail goes. And we'll tie this in right on top of the hook shank. And just make sure it's nicely secured. And clip out our excess, our butt ends. Okay, so now that we got our bucktail in there, we can come in and tie our other turkey wing. So I'm gonna measure right about to where that tail ends. And we'll transfer that into my other hand. Keep it right on top, real snug, just like we did the tail. And secure this right on the hook shank here. So we'll give it some nice tight wraps. Make sure that's not gonna move on us. There we go, and we can clip out our excess material. So I'm gonna start with a couple of clumps. I'm gonna do one on either side here before we go to spinning. So we're gonna make sure, clean out all those duffy fibers. That's one of the great things about mule hair deer, deer hair, mule deer hair, is that it doesn't have too thick of an under fur. It's not too difficult to get all of that stuffy stuff out from underneath the hair you want to use. And then we'll go ahead and stack this. And then we can tie it in on either side. So I'm just going to measure out how far I want these to kind of be flared back, the collar of it. So right about halfway down, what is our body there? And then we can come back in and clip out the rest. What I like to do with the butt ends is I'll stick them right back down in my hair stacker and then clip them off. And then that way I can use them as I get to go uh, towards the head. So we'll do this side real quick here. Make sure that I got the right length that I'm looking for. couple of loose wraps before we go ahead and pull it down and secure that side in place. Come back and do the same on my far side, the side closest to you guys. Let's check that, transfer it on over, and then we can tie that guy down. The same method, couple of wraps, and then we secure it in place. And we can go through it a few times, just make sure that we're secure before we push it all back as good as we can. So nice and tough, try and get it to stack. And we can sneak in front of it and start working on some other clumps of deer hair here. All right, so now comes in the butt sections. I got these butt sections saved. This is what we're gonna use to spin. This will be the main part of our head. So we're just gonna put this right on top here. Do a couple of quick loose wraps. Maybe we'll do three. And then I'm gonna pull it and let it spin as it goes and then we'll just wrap through it a few times make sure that it's flaring out as best as it can there kind of work forward through it 
and see where we landed there. Looks like I might do one more small clump just because I was a little far back on this guy. Typically you do a couple and then this last clump might get you to the end. But if you do need to add a little bit, like I am going to do here, just to get all the way up to that hook eye. So we'll do one more clump of hair here. Just like so, a couple, three wraps, and then we'll spin that in place as well. So we got a nice thick deer hair head ready to be trimmed here. Go through it one or two more times, and then I'm going to go ahead and whip finish before we start to trim here. So just right through the deer hair, a couple quick whip finish turns, and then we can clip out our thread. I'm trying to avoid cutting that deer hair just yet. So it looks pretty good. Just gonna kind of work this stuff. I'm gonna take my dubbing brush now. Just work through the hair a little bit, get some of those looser fibers to come out, get them to flare as best we can. This is the trickiest part for me working with this deer hair head. So there's a lot of you tires out there that are much more proficient at it than I am. But others that aren't, hopefully this helps you along a little bit. So now we're going to trim this hair. And I'm just going to start right up towards the front here. So now we're ready for trimming. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to use my other scissors, my nice deer hair scissors. Or actually just hair scissors from Dr. Slick. These are brand new from Dr. Slick. They're the razor scissors but they feature a nice long blade here, uh, which is great for trimming deer hair, as well as other natural fibers. And I just like to keep these guys nice and sharp, as you can see. So I'm just gonna work my way around, slowly trimming downward. I want just kind of a nice round bulbous head on this guy. Doesn't have to be too sculpin-like, unless that's what you're going for. So then also I kind of, to avoid cutting my collar, I'll sneak down underneath there and clip out just like so. So you want to leave that collar, all those pointy fibers that we left stacked coming off of the back end of this deer head as a collar. So we'll just slowly trim and work on it. This is one of the more difficult parts for me is, is trimming and making everything proportional. But again, the more you do it, the easier things become. You only have to do it 10,000 times to perfect it. If there is such a thing. Muddler minnow goes back a long ways. I believe it was a Canadian fly fisher who invented it. Do a little research on that and we'll share it in the blog for you so you know. Can't tell you right now, but we'll find out who that is. And it's been around for a long time. It deserves a place in any streamer angler's fly box. Or if you uh, are a nymph fisherman, it's not a bad fly to hang off an indicator or or even if you're contact nymphing, throw it on there and play with some different drift techniques and have a lot of good success with it. But when you're trimming, always start slowly. It's easier to trim off more than it is to reattach things. So start slow, work your way down. So you got that shape that you're looking for. Getting close, that's getting close to the shape that I'm looking for. Probably work on it just a little bit more. And then the final thing you can do if you're interested in it is you can take a lighter to the hair and singe it. 
But you gotta be careful when you do that as well because it's very easy to singe off more than you want to. I always kind of end up with like a cone head shape when I burn mine, so I tend not to. I just like to trim it nice down low, nice and low and let it uh, do what it wants to do there. So as I'm trimming though, I, I do kind of, I'll use my, my left hand, my thumb, to brace myself just to try and keep things somewhat consistent as I work around and the rotary vise is great for this type of type of uh, trimming because you can just slowly work it keep your scissors positioned fairly similar and work it around shaping that head But we'll go ahead and leave it alone now there as that is a nice finished muddler minnow. If you haven't tried to fish it, make sure to give it a shot. If you enjoyed the video today, make sure to give us a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see us tie in the future, please drop us a comment in the lines below. For more fly fishing and outdoor related videos, be sure to subscribe to the Avid Max YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you out there.